Welcome to this video on the way of things. This video is in the series Desert Survival and we're going to cover surviving in the desert on a day hike kind of situation where you've driven out in the desert and then hiked off from your car and we're going to talk about this particular segment about surviving the heat in the Mojave Desert uh, where a lot of hiking and stuff is done the temperatures can actually get to 110, 115 degrees and this kind of hiking is dangerous and uh, but it can be done safely if you do the right things and that's more what this is about. So we'll be talking with my uh, brother-in-law Tim Liddell here who's done a lot of hiking in the, in the Mojave Desert and knows it very well, it's particularly Joshua Tree and some of the extreme temperatures that it sees. So Tim, tell us a little bit about, we're, we're out there, we're the average person, we're going to do a day hike in maybe Joshua Tree or Death Valley. What are some of the things that we need to do when we're getting ready to leave that vehicle? One of the things I would do is uh, probably crack the window just a little bit to let some of that heat out. Just a little bit. And that'll cool things off just uh, substantially, actually. Um, Make sure you have uh, everything in there that you think you might need if you have to come back to the car. Um, like your equipment, your water, and your blanket, and uh, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, it seems like a lot of times people don't realize it, but they're really betting their life on that vehicle starting, aren't they? Exactly. I mean, we come back, we've been on a long day hike, it's been hot. And we come to that car, we expect it to start up and, and go get an ice cream cone 40, 50 miles later, you know, and that's always not going to happen. Sometimes these cars will fail us or we'll get stuck in the sand or, or bust a drive line. So these things in the car suddenly turn into essentials for life, don't they? Exactly. They could be your, uh, your home there for a while if nobody comes to help you out. Um, Another thing I would be really careful about is when your car has been parked there for a period of time, it's going to provide shade, um, which is a place that um, snakes can go under. So if you happen to go back to your car, before you go walking up to your car, just think that somebody may be using that for shade. You know, another thing in this modern world that we seem to have that's a real help, but we need to be aware of it, is cell phones. Now a cell phone, I have noticed, many times driving out into the desert that of course you lose uh, cell service but a lot of times if you know that only a mile and maybe even you know five six hundred yards back you, you had cell service could make a difference between life and death i've known of several uh, people that have found themselves in that uh, situation uh, so a charger uh, knowing where you have cell service and not seems to be another one of the things that before you leave the car would be a good thing to know. Uh, you've had, uh, I know, cell phones, but you've also used professionally radios that I think were the same way. Yes, you can't always count on the, uh, the technology. Um, oftentimes, even if you've been in an environment where there's no cell service, sometimes just by climbing to the top of a small peak may be enough to get you some service. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so now we start to leave the, the security and comfort of the vehicle. What are some of the things that we need to carry with us, again, in this very hot desert environment, hot and dry desert environment? Well, the, uh, the 10 essentials that I mentioned earlier. Now that you, you mentioned that, and that was a very good list, what would be some of the uh, items on the, the 10 essentials that we would want to carry, in, especially in, in a hot situation? The special items, special items would be extra water. You can use your thermal blanket that is going to keep you warm at night, but you can also use it for shade. You may end up stretching it to make shade for yourself for a while. Yeah, I suppose that would be a very uh, important thing because a lot of places in the desert, uh, there's virtually no shade. Now, some places there is, like Joshua Tree has a lot of rocks and and such that provide shade, but you get out on some of the greasewood flats and places like that, uh, places in Death Valley, I know that you've hiked to have virtually no shade. 
If you find a place that looks like it has shade, if there's a spot you want to go to, make sure that it's not occupied by somebody else that's looking for shade, like a snake. Okay, now also shade is, uh, I know back in my uh, power plant days, we talked about radiant energy and it was being as much as a thousand watts per square meter. So I know that if you have like your, whether it's a portable shade or, or natural shade, uh, what do you think, how much longer do you think you would last in the desert say with or without shade, what kind of advantage is that if you get into a survival situation? I think you could, I think if you do it right, you could double your time out there if you're, if you're very careful. So if you had a day's worth of water, you would have two days of, of water. Yes. I'm, I'm always willing to carry. So a that lot. gives you a lot better chance of survival. Exactly. I'm always willing to carry a bit more in my day pack survival gear, like the food and the water and the shelter and get used to just a little bit more weight than not have it in case I need it for later. Just get used to a little bit more weight, even on a day pack. Okay, so we're talking in this desert survival, we're talking about water being one of the key elements. And of course, sometimes you can find natural water, and then other times, uh, some places in the Mojave Desert, there's virtually none, or at least none that a person could walk to. But if there is natural water, what, what are some of the precautions that we might want to carry with us some of the things that we could carry to drink that water because not all that water is uh, pleasant as it were. Uh, they have very very small and very very effective water filtration kits that you can get at any good sporting goods store. Uh, boiling water is another way to do it and there are pills you can put in there. It may not be the great, greatest tasting water but it will be water that's probably good to drink. And that would get you that precious time you need for somebody to rescue you and, or get back to your car or whatever. Yes, yes. Okay, well that seems to uh, kind of cover it. Of course, the, da the danger in the desert is elevated when it's very hot. Uh, we hope that uh, you've learned something from this. I certainly have. And with that, we thank you uh, for watching The Way of Things.